My name is Tennis Sommer, and this is Marbella Life. My next guest is the lovely Sofia, who originally comes from Bulgaria, but has been living in Marbella for almost 30 years. Besides being the mother of two young adults, she's best known as an etiquette influencer, as she has over a million followers on Instagram and over two million on TikTok. She has the wisdom and experience of a 50-year-old with the soul and vitality of a 20, and I'm so happy she's bringing etiquette and manners into fashion again. Join me for this interesting conversation with Sofia about her work and how she started all of this. So you have um, over 1 million followers on Instagram, over 2 million on TikTok. How did you go so viral in social media? And how did you even think of starting to do these videos on uh, social media instead of doing the dances on TikToks and, and, and all the other things that other influencers were doing? It's maybe you're lucky now and you're really successful with your bad manners, mm -hmm. but this will not be forever. Mm -hmm. You can be there and you will go really quick down. And if you don't have them from there, it's very difficult to come up again. Mm -hmm. To realize that there's so much you can show and so much you can educate on social mm -hmm. media that if everybody was doing that way to motivate and educate, I think we're going to live in a different world. Mm -hmm. How do you see the new generation with all the pop culture of the videos of the artists? They are very much showing the skin, doing it, working, all this not so ladylike uh, movements. Yeah. How do you think that is affecting the generation now? And how, how do you think, where is it going to go? What are the qualities of a gentleman or what makes a man sexy in your opinion? Sexy? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, or what today. do you look for in a man? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi, Sophia. Nice to Thank see you. Thank you for coming. Nice to Thank see you, you too. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here me with you. Too. Before we start the interview, can you please show me how a lady sits on the chair properly? Um, actually, she sits like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, you choose now. This is a good position or no. let's do it properly. Let's do it nicely. Yeah. Well, we're going to sit like, I mean, you know, ladies' um, gestures mm -hmm. and um, movements and body language should be very soft and nice mm -hmm. in, in general in everything. And slow. And slow and it's just enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come, we're going to sit like half of the chair. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go to the end. Leaning. Okay. Uh, because this is also very good for exercise because yes. when you keep straight, you actually working in your, your stomach and your abs, yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, straight back and um, the way how we are now, mm -hmm. so we're going to have a little bit facing each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. You can have them together or maybe crossed by the ankles, but we are but not, not. going to do this. That's my that's my guilty yeah, you always thing. Do. I always do this because I love to sit, but I will yeah, try but my now best now. But remember why you should not do it because uh -huh. first of all, it's, it's not, not good. Uh, it's not good for the circulation. I'm sorry, exactly. I heard. So at least, sorry, I'm going a little mm -hmm. bit more Ooh. like sexy. Sorry, <laughs> but at least if you're gonna cross them, mm -hmm. keep a space between. Uh -huh. You know, okay. it's not very comfortable, uh -huh. but you keep it. Uh -huh. mm, space. Yeah, so oh, you need right. to be. be but more today I'm gonna yeah. be. Today you try. I'm gonna be a princess. Yeah. Be a print. <laughs> yeah, try them together and it looks elegant. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Yeah, it's very And like, you natural. feel, I think you feel also more confident. Yes. You know? And your, your posture is good and otherwise you, you're more like a... No, it's you know, ugly. Look at like, me. You know, mm -hmm. look, look now. This yeah. is usually how, mm -hmm. and especially young girls are like that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and on the phone. And on the phone, because then yeah. we go especially... Then your stomach down. goes here in yeah. front. <laughs> then you have the curve on your mm -hmm. back, you know, and vertebras. And mm -hmm. um, the spine is getting so bad. And mm -hmm. by the time you're 30, mm -hmm. you're getting worse. And by 40 and 50, then Forget you're about not it. the person anymore. Yeah. Then you so, go yeah, back everything operation. Is just, it's just here from the... This is the thorax here, the, the, the cox. Down. Cox six, no? Cox six, yeah. yeah. Just keep it straight, mm -hmm. stomach in, mm -hmm. and that's it. Your yeah. arms go naturally down. Yeah. I do Pilates, so yeah. I'm very much into good posture. But you do forget yourself sometimes, you know, when you're sitting and yeah. getting comfortable. And, and yeah, we try to keep uh, our yeah. posture good. This is like calling us, come, yes. come, it's come. So nice. Yeah, it's so but nice. This we can do at home on the sofa. Yeah, in the sofa. But also, you know, everything that is not straight, it's mm -hmm. causes problems later. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. now, you know, I'm a little bit 
it act, twisted. Because, twisted uh-huh. Yeah. So this part should be always straight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, today we make maybe a yeah. little exception because yeah, we are not uh, eating in a restaurant. Yeah. But uh, anyway, thank you again for coming. What a beautiful day. It is. We're so lucky. Yeah, we're so lucky to live here. Uh, we're at Pesaya Beach today, a lovely restaurant. Uh, I'm sure you have been here before. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, before we move on to the main subject, which is what you do, I would like you to introduce yourself and say a little bit about your background. Where are you from and how did you end up in Marbella? My name is Sofia. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, original name Ilieva, but uh, I adopt this uh, Sofia Marbella because mm-hmm. of the social media. And uh, it's funny that when I think about when I came here and counted, it's 28 years ago. Wow. Seems like yesterday <laughs> at the same time uh-huh. and seems like a long time ago. Because you must have done so many things in the 30 years. So. Actually, almost three years. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I end up here and well, we're going to talk about that. Uh, so happy to be and uh, yeah, I'm happy to be 50 this year that I'm looking for and really grateful. Yeah, you look amazing. Really. Thank you so much. And uh, also not only you look physically amazing, mm-hmm. but also the way you carry yourself and your attitude and you're so elegant and positive and that really you know, brightens up the whole room when a person like this walks in. So thank you. Yeah. Really... I like this. I mm-hmm. like when people see, because it happened to me also, I see mm-hmm. a woman, mm-hmm. uh, a lady to call it, because, uh, you know, when she's uh, walking that way and the posture and the way how she presents, it's like makes you feel you, you automatically mm-hmm. you start mm-hmm. doing the same, you know, yes. like, wow, look how she is. Mm-hmm. So this is motivation. And we should motivate each other mm-hmm. to um, to keep at least our first impression really mm-hmm. in place. Yes. So Sophia has mm-hmm. um, uh, has a lot of followers on Instagram and on TikTok um, due to her etiquette and um, etiquette tips and uh, manners. Manners. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, so, yes, where did you get this interest of this subject? Because it's not very popular anymore nowadays, in my opinion. So where did you start this? Um, where did you get this interest? Uh, well, in my case, it starts from very little. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, I'm coming from Bulgaria. It's a country, um, I mean, Eastern countries. Uh, I used to live communism time you know yes, um, I know so it was different for for young people probably they don't know so much but mm-hmm. um, I mean communism to say it socialism is has a lot of bad things mm-hmm. but one thing that was at least I appreciated was the education and um, also the discipline mm-hmm. and the way how you have to respect yourself and everybody around you mm-hmm. so we grow up with that we had at school ethics mm-hmm. we had um, so much to uh, to know and learn about respecting and manners and etiquette mm. so this comes anyway from from mm-hmm. there probably mm-hmm. i don't know mm-hmm. in your country on that time it's probably no? probably just more from my parents from my mother teaching mm. me you always have to say hello to older people. She taught me the basics, how to eat with a knife and fork. And yeah. she, she has given me this, but not, not from so school. Much. No. Well, we had but, it school. Yeah, you were. But yeah. I, I, I'm a little bit younger than you. So maybe they yeah. had it before. But at that time when I went, yeah. Estonia just got independency. Oh, okay. And yeah, that was like a already different time. That's what it is. I don't yes. feel so old. And I think like I'm um, into the 30s, you know. Oh, my. So, um, yes, it was on that time until the communism break. We had at least these principles. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, social skills was in a, in a really high uh, mm-hmm. level. Mm-hmm. So little by little was learning, uh, you know, from there. And mm-hmm. then um, I just really wanted to come out from Bulgaria. Mm-hmm. And I remember my dad used to say, well, if you want to be someone and if you want to live outside and travel the world, you need to know how to behave. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for that reason, he said, you need to learn. Mm-hmm. So he used to take me a lot of books and uh, how to behave and mm-hmm. to be like, uh, to learn. He said, you need to be a diplomat mm-hmm. because the diplomats, they know how to deal yes. and how to behave. 
so it came from there, like when I was 12, 12, 13, 14, and I wanted to study actually as a diplomat mm-hmm. and never happened that. But um, yeah, later on when I came here, I took mm-hmm. it really seriously. Uh-huh. So what happened when you came to Marbella? Uh, <clears throat> did you start already working on the etiquette, the manners, or what kind of jobs did you start doing in Spain? Yes, in Marbella I came for different reason. I mm-hmm. was an ice skater, mm-hmm. figure skater. So I finished university about um, sport management and coach and uh, mm-hmm. sport medicine. And I really wanted to work in Madrid as a um, coach of the mm-hmm. ice skating. You know, this mm-hmm. was the main things because... Look, living in Bulgaria was very difficult. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really wanted to leave Bulgaria and you needed to be able to do something. Otherwise, they don't, you don't get the mm-hmm. visa on that mm-hmm. time. We're talking about 96. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, I'm going to start working and then I will see what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. So I apply in Madrid about uh, being a coach of ice skating mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, everything to do with the management and um sport medicine and massage and all this stuff and um, with some friends who were living here they said mm-hmm. why don't come and visit us in Marbella mm-hmm. like, okay where is Marbella mm-hmm. you know like um, not everybody in that time was talking good about Marbella mm-hmm. you know they're lazy Marbella and Lucia they just mm-hmm. have fun and yeah. no one works and, siesta and fiesta yeah f- <laughs> siesta you know a lot of gypsies that's what mm-hmm. people were saying mm-hmm. about Marbella on that time I was mm-hmm. like okay well, I will go you know visit so I came here and I said, I'm staying on <laughs> the first day. I said, I'm not moving. Uh, but there's no ice skating here, mm-hmm. ice ring. And I said, I'm going to wait. Maybe, you know, travel from Madrid, you know, 21 years old. What you? So what did you like about yeah. Maria so much that you said, I'm staying? What was the thing that? But it's, um, it's the energy, I yeah. think. There's something that, uh, maybe not for everyone, but in my case, it's... Um, I don't know. There's a there's magical something that is like saying, there "Okay, is. come and stay." Yeah, I think it is um, the energy. It's the energy. Yeah, it's the energy because so many people say, "Okay, they leave. Mm-hmm. I, I never leave for so long from here," mm-hmm. and they come back and say, "I want to come back." Mm-hmm. This episode is brought to you by Besaya Beach and Tikitano by Besaya. Visit my website to find out more about these beautiful restaurants. So, we will, uh, Marbella. Marbella. Everyone keeps on coming back. Yeah. Yes, it is it is a magical place. And I think the best way also to enjoy Marbella is to leave for a little bit. Just for even little day trips or weekends or a month. Then you can appreciate it even more when you come back. Because you do miss some things from here. You know, we don't have this big city, maybe cultural things here. But then you can leave and come back and enjoy the Marbella life again. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, uh, how to say, look, it's changed. I mean, it's not the same like yeah. in the 90s. Um, how has it changed for um, you? But look, um, it's very difficult to explain it because when you see it with your eyes of 20, mm-hmm. and it's not the same like what you see now in the 50s. So on that time, if I have to be uh, for the young, when we were, we were, we were focusing on different things, you mm-hmm. know, it's a party and mm-hmm. enjoying life and then working and see what you're going to do with your life. So you actually see it different. And mm-hmm. uh, then when you marry it, you see it different. Mm-hmm. When you have kids, you see, you see, sure. you start seeing the positive and negative mm-hmm. in different ways. Mm-hmm. But somehow the basic about the weather, about the people, about everything, what's going on, it's, it's, you know how to say it depends of how you're gonna make it for yourself mm-hmm. and what kind of lifestyle you live in and like what you said, kind of. if you are home with the kids mm-hmm. your life is in this one way if you have to go out make a career you see you'll find different things here no exactly so i think we need to adapt in every situation mm-hmm. and be a little bit like the camelons mm-hmm. i don't know if i pronounce it properly that's the only way it's um it's about us and it's about everybody around you yeah, you adapt to the environment. You have to. We cannot come here and start mm-hmm. uh, changing. Okay, now are probably 200,000 people living in Marbella. But um, you come into Spain as a foreigner and you want to change uh, 40 million people mm-hmm. on your way. Mm-hmm. It's impossible. You have to adapt mm-hmm. the way how it is here and make it better for everyone. Mm-hmm. So we cannot do all the way around. No, and you're definitely making it better with your etiquette and your <laughs> yes. tips because um, nowadays I think 
how do you see the new generation with all the pop culture of the videos of the artists? They are very much showing the skin, doing it, working, all this not so ladylike uh, movements. Yeah. How do you think that is affecting the generation now? And how, how do you think, where is it going to go from, from, from this? Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere until we don't put some mm -hmm. limits. And because technology, technology, it changes a lot. Uh, social media changes a lot. The meaning of social media one was one in one way, but like everything new, mm -hmm. you don't know. You need to, you need to test it mm -hmm. and you see. And of course, you're going to learn from the mistakes. So this, I'm sure that is not going to be forever like that mm -hmm. if we if we know to put the boundaries and limits will change but uh, as i said as anything new mm -hmm. we need to pass through all these uh mistakes mm -hmm. and we know now what it is um it just went over our limits mm -hmm. uh, so we don't know how to handle it the same like you don't know how to be to handle with being a parent mm -hmm. or when you're married how your marriage is going to go because mm -hmm. it's something that you learn in the process yeah you can't and control everything you can't And it's not, you're not born mm -hmm. with that. So you need to learn step by step by, by experience. Mm -hmm. So I think with all these social medias, with everything what we've seen, it's, um, is a testing. We're doing it wrong, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that somehow, if we are more who are aware of that, we can, uh, put it on, on, on rules, mm -hmm. like in general, like manners and etiquette. This is a principle rules mm -hmm. on a daily basic living. Mm -hmm. So all this came because it was necessary to put the rules. Rules are not bad. They're just the guidelines mm -hmm. that we need to follow. Mm -hmm. The same like the traffic lights. Mm -hmm. If you're not stopping on the red, what's going to happen? Yeah. But I just feel like the younger generation, they yeah. don't really see. Hopefully they'll follow you on Instagram and see how a lady should act. But I just feel like it's not really popular right now to act like a lady you know all these reality tv shows you know the kardashians that they're following you know they are not really acting ladylike let's be honest mm -hmm. you know when we think of a lady i think of someone like grace kelly audrey hepburn you know really going back in time and they are not really maybe now they're getting more popular again i do think the timeless elegance will come back and and it is back in certain situations and and communities but i'm talking overall the youth is very much influenced by the influencers of you know like the pop culture and uh, half naked singers so at least i'm so happy that you are <laughs> getting so many followers on instagram and tiktok and teaching the younger crowd as well how to behave properly yeah uh, they start from from home mm -hmm. you know and that's why i said this The technology and the social media, it's uh, showing so much um, an experience, you know, mm -hmm. and this comes from the background. Mm -hmm. uh, and no matter what your background is, if you don't have these basic manners and etiquettes at home, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to show. And that's what everybody else is seeing. Mm -hmm. These days, parents, um, they don't have time to look after their kids. Uh, everything is going so quick mm -hmm. that... You're making the kids because you want to have a kids mm -hmm. without the acknowledgement why. Mm -hmm. And you leave them to live the life of social media. And that's what becomes a young generation. They don't, they don't know. They don't see. And they're arguing mm -hmm. with me constantly mm -hmm. because they said, this is old things. Mm -hmm. We don't live by rules or no one. But this is really becoming from home. Mm -hmm. And if it's missing at home, Then after that is us as a coaches, mm -hmm. because it's not only me, there's so many coaches who are trying these days to bring back, as I always say, bring back manners and ethics into fashion, because mm -hmm. lately everything is fashion. And that's what it is. Trendy and fashion, mm -hmm. not elegance and classy like what it used to be. So it's it's a set for the new generation mm -hmm. and then depends on us as a parents if mm -hmm. we want to accept it or not so you have um, over one million followers on instagram over two million on tiktok yeah. how did you go so viral in social media and how did you even think of starting to do these videos on uh, social media instead of doing the dances on tiktoks and and, and all the other things that other mm -hmm. influencers were doing where did you get the idea 
Yeah, just to say that, look, dancing on TikTok mm -hmm. is nothing wrong. It's actually, mm -hmm. it's very it's, good. It's fine. And yeah. everyone has their own niche. And it's yeah. totally, I respect everyone's uh, jobs and positions and what they do. But it's, uh, that's why yours really yeah. stands out. And, and it's also useful. It's not just for fun. It's exactly. useful as well. Uh, social media is the same like everybody else, uh, especially a little bit older. You, I thought it was, um, exactly just dancing mm -hmm. and uh, spending time and, uh, until you don't go into the, the spot to realize that there's so much you can show and so much you can educate on social mm -hmm. media that if everybody was doing that way to motivate and educate, I think we're going to live in a different world. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's going to be so easy. Uh, so I started, first of all, with my manners and etiquette when I came here. Of course, with the ice skating didn't work. And um, I remember my previous thinking of, um, you know, diplomat and I tried, <clears throat> sorry, I tried also. But of course, Marbella is a very limited place. Mm -hmm. We cannot... Uh, it's not really you know a place for is. career. Uh, not so much for this kind of thing. So I had to move to Madrid and mm -hmm. I didn't want to move to Madrid and mm -hmm. say, let's see, internet was coming on that time slowly, but it was at least a progress. So I started searching for diplomats and courses and all this, it takes you to manners and etiquette, mm -hmm. you know, protocol. Mm -hmm. So it took me to America to a, um, coach on that time that she's still coaching uh, Jacqueline Watimore she had these um, classes for manners and protocol online so little by little I start uh, was difficult on that time it's not like now mm -hmm. uh, so you had so to available. pay a lot of money to get mm -hmm. the course and she used to send it to you and you learn mm -hmm. by yourself so little by little I said wow that is actually what I want to do mm -hmm. And then I said, I'm going to open a school. Uh -huh. Sounds exciting. Obviously in Spanish mm -hmm. uh, on that time. Uh, so I opened in 2000 a school in Marbella about manners and etiquette, business mm -hmm. etiquette and protocol mm -hmm. school. Uh, it was included also for modeling, for postures and languages. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought it is going to be really successful. Mm -hmm. And actually people was like, what is this? Mm -hmm. So like a big company, I remember at that time, like a putting and cleaning. So like mm -hmm. really big uh, companies who send their stuff to be uh, educated. educated. Uh, but in general, um, people was not um, interested. No? interested. Mm. It was like something wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, with languages, yes. For modeling, mm. for postures, yes. But about manners and etiquette mm. was like, what is this? Mm. So we were struggling in the beginning. And um, so what happened is that for two years, the school was going really slowly. I couldn't even get a license, something that mm. in that time hurts me a lot. Mm -hmm. Because when I went for a license for the school, they said, well, look, if you had a golf course or football or stadium or a restaurant, we will give you. But for these kind of things, you need to wait longer. Mm. Yeah, sorry. It's so <laughs> this sad. Was really sad. So I was struggling for license. Mm for the school like more than six seven months or maybe a year to get a license but as i always say it didn't if stop you, you. Once, and no and this so and so for me it's working like that you tell me no and then i say i'm gonna okay. prove you you're wrong mm -hmm. so going and going anyway but then when i was in the <laughs> going and flourishing mm -hmm. i um get married and pregnant and um i have to choose career or housewife and I choose to be a housewife. And I left the school to continue as a language schools. And um, obviously after that, it's just uh, become something else with the rest of the coaches. Mm -hmm. And um, someone from my family said, listen, don't be worried now. Take care about your family. Mm -hmm. One day you're going to come back. Yes. This like, is not forever. You just do a few years yeah. of being a housewife and then your kids grow up and... Yeah, I was thinking that uh, it's good to be a businesswoman and mm -hmm. family and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, from my proper, proper mm -hmm. experience and now uh, having so many clients, really 100% if you're going to focus, you cannot focus to be a, a mm -hmm. housewife mm -hmm. and a businesswoman. It doesn't exist and doesn't work. I think it's, uh, I, I have tried to 
always keep on doing a little bit of my work on the side, but I can say it is really difficult to divide yourself because you do have to divide yourself a little bit. So you have to think what is more important. It is true that the kids are only small now. And I think it's important to, uh, it's nice that you take down the downtime and, and, and these years. And then later on, you can do it in another business and like you are. 50 and now you have millions of followers it's never too late to start something else something new something that didn't even exist in the 90s you know you couldn't have done this yeah you can do it but you're not 100 percent. yeah and if you want to do something should be 100 mm -hmm. involved mm -hmm. so if you want to be a mom you mm -hmm. need to be mom of 100 mm -hmm. who is telling you no i can deal with it mm -hmm. it's not true because mm -hmm. inside deep inside mm -hmm. they're struggling and mm -hmm. they're not happy and the energy is a uh, if you're going to all talk over the about place. <laughs> over the place and no one is happy in the family mm -hmm. because I'm sure that even if you are say, no, I'm with my kids, mm -hmm. you're not hundred percent of your kids mm -hmm. and leave the kids and the husband and the house work. What about you mm -hmm. as a person? Mm -hmm. Where are you happy? Where is your time? So I don't believe no woman is successful in the both area as a, as a housewife and mom mm -hmm. and a business career, hundred percent dedicating to the all this, um, how to say, part of life. Yeah. So anyway, you you had your school and then you were a housewife. So you've done it all. You've yeah. done all the stages in life. And now, when when did you start then doing more of your social media? When which year did you start uh, growing or or um, like on purposely uh, teaching people through social media? Which, mm -hmm. when was that? A few years ago, I Yes, uh, start COVID and, mm -hmm. um, I had a friend, um, friend who came also. She is from Lithuania and she was saying to me, so what are you doing? And I said, um, well, actually I'm trying, this was my first thoughts to coming back. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm trying to be a YouTuber. Mm -hmm. And she was looking and said, we don't mm -hmm. have even video on YouTube. I mm -hmm. had some acting videos because mm -hmm. I do like uh, performing in the theater. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to promote myself a little bit more as a um, classical model now as, you know, after 40. And a few videos of acting in a gracious way. And uh, she said, well, there's nothing there. What you want to promote yourself? And I said, well, I don't know. I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. She said, why you don't? Okay, well, start with social media. So she encouraged me. And actually, I hired her to help me mm -hmm. um, to move a little bit myself as a, a commercial model and um, actress. Mm -hmm. And um, we start a little bit with social media, plain COVID. Mm -hmm. And then she said, but what else are you into? Mm -hmm. What else you can do? And uh, you need to find your niche, proper niche. And, um, you know, interrogating me about my past. And I said, well, I was, uh, you know, into uh, etiquette and manners. And she said, oh, this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Why you don't do a video and just explain something about that? Uh, and I said, well, on Instagram, no, I, Instagram, I had like maybe less than a thousand followers. Mm -hmm. Um, TikTok, I didn't mm -hmm. have, I have two followers. So mm -hmm. three showing my acting skills, mm -hmm. of copying some videos. And I said, you know what? Um, I didn't even think about it. Think about it. I didn't even tell her what I'm going to mm do. I, one night I put it to TikTok. Uh -huh. It was 11 at night, I remember. It was in 2021. Mm -hmm. in 20, Three yeah. years ago. Yeah, almost. Um, yeah, 21 in the, before summer. And um, I put the video how to carry properly the handbag. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the good way, the bad way and the good mm -hmm. way. And I left. Even it was written so bad. I, mm -hmm. just, I don't know even yeah. how, you know, But TikTok you have to start works. from somewhere. You just start. I just said that whatever. And my daughter wake me up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And she said, mom, do you see your TikTok? And I said, I don't even know how to go into the TikTok <laughs> again. <laughs> you know, yeah. because she did the account for uh -huh. me. And uh, uh, okay, so I'm going there and see, oh yeah, I put the video. I just completely mm -hmm. forgot. And was 500, uh, almost half a million view. Wow. On that video. Mm -hmm. And she, my daughter said, you know, just put another one. In a few days, just mm -hmm. put another one. I said, okay. So I call uh, Marina, or she call uh, this girl, and I said, listen, let's let's make another video. Mm -hmm. And let's see, I put it to 
TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I start putting three videos a week. Mm -hmm. And I'm in... making a proper plan. You did like a proper plan? Or was it just like, oh, let's just try? Just let's try. just try. It was nothing. I don't know. Like a trial error. But, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, things happening without to without think about plan. it. And mm -hmm. then it's going and it's flowing. Sometimes when you're really trying to do it, it doesn't work. So you never mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I just start everything. doing and then you'll see. I think everything should be, I learn at least, just do it and then think after. <laughs> yes. And this happened like that. So mm -hmm. in a week, uh, all the videos went to million views mm -hmm. and I said, okay, so people are hungry yes. for more information. And there was, when you look the comments, um, a lot of comments and um, a lot of arguing between them. Mm -hmm. Someone defend me. Someone said, this is all. This mm -hmm. is doesn't work. What mm -hmm. is this? So then I start realizing and analyzing that, of course, TikTok and social media generals are for younger people. Then, you know, it's analytics mm -hmm. show it, you know, 20 to 35 of my followers who mm -hmm. are 80%. Mm -hmm. So for them, that's mean that they don't have any manners and etiquette, mm -hmm. most of them. And I said, okay. I will remind you mm -hmm. what manners and etiquette are and how important and how easy life can be with them. Mm -hmm. So from all these comments and um, talking to them, I found a big gap mm -hmm. and lack of uh, the basic things in life, manners and etiquette. Mm -hmm. So start like that. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. But n you started like that. But now moving forward, do you now have some kind of a plan for each week that I'm going to do also five videos a week? Do you have a strategy? Do you, you have an assistant? Do you have a team? How do you work now? Is it more structurized or are you still like going with the flow? Uh, yes, with the time, always I am... Well, the first year, because of, you know, look different, uh, was different because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So there was more people into home, into all this. Um, so I had more time to make a lot of videos mm -hmm. and I didn't want to put them uh, every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I was working just with uh, one assistant mm -hmm. and um, was taking it really like something that I like and as a hobby. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that this can be so... Like a job. A job and and, and to res it's a big responsibility mm -hmm. in the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Because you see that these people need you, mm -hmm. some of them. They ask you for questions. Mm -hmm. They're so desperate. <laughs> and um, But I was still taking care about the family on that time. You know, kids are going to teenagers' years and this is most important to spend time with them. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, half, maybe half, no. And then last year, actually, after one year and a half, I said, okay, Sophia, take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Kids are going to university and said, now it's time really to take it seriously. And what happened? It's, um, I do my videos sometimes like now, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a moment something comes to me mm -hmm. and I can film it myself. Mm -hmm. I have people helping me. Uh, but in the end of the day, it's you who are taking the, um, how you say, the, the wheel, the, the, yeah, the wheel, the, the ropes, wheel. Yeah. And, and do it. You're in and charge. if it's spontaneous, I do it. Sometimes can be really professional and sometimes mm -hmm. it's just here. I will put the video and make mm -hmm. one for myself. So yeah. it's just what the instinct is telling mm -hmm. me. I'm guiding myself lately through the moments. I do it and I don't really care if you gonna judge me or no after that. Mm -hmm. The most important is the content and the what I'm showing you. Yeah. And it's clearly working because, uh, somehow it's, it's working. Yeah. People find that. They like something. I don't know what it is. You know, you have a lot of opinion. Obviously, you're not going to be always likable by everyone. From everyone. And I don't want everybody mm -hmm. to like me. I want only the people who get inspired from me. And some of them probably will wake up a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said in one of my posts, I need more haters to become friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, because a lot of them become my friend yeah. eventually. Yeah, for sure. I think it's the hater in the beginning because they're like, not sure this is something new. This is not something I've yeah. known. 
No, no, but later on, what is the hate about? This is so beautiful what you are showing. I don't understand how can someone hate, you know, behaving elegantly, beautifully. There's, I, I, because they think maybe they are a bit jealous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you know what it is. I think um, if you don't have it at home as mm -hmm. um, education, mm -hmm. um, what is before at home? Well, they're educating you, you know, it's, you have these basic manners. Uh, you go to school and you have them there as well. Mm -hmm. So you're around society and you still see that's a lot of respect. This was, I was talking before. Mm -hmm. Now, as a parents, you can be educating your kids with manners and etiquette perfectly at home. But if the school is not offering mm -hmm. and the society is not offering, you're lost. You say, mom, you're wrong. Dad, mm -hmm. you're wrong. Yeah, everyone else is doing the other way. Exactly. So I understand this also. It's, it's a, yeah. kind of like um, um, hitting between what is good and what is bad. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, I can be successful without manners and I think mm -hmm. that also, why not? And I always say, yes, you can be. But remember that success it's maybe you're lucky now and you're really successful with your bad manners, mm -hmm. but this will not be forever. Mm -hmm. You can be there and you will go really quick down. And if you don't have them from there, it's very difficult to come mm -hmm. up again. Mm -hmm. So the second thing is why we want to do it in the hard way when we can do it in the easiest way. Mm -hmm. They taught us everything is hard, hard, hard. Mm -hmm. But if you're educated, if you have good manners, if you know in uh, you know people, you know how to think, you know life, how it is it going, you can achieve so many things in the easiest way. And that's what it's all about. I want to ask you about how do you think that the um, men and women the roles of women and men have changed over the years like i think it used to be more common to be a housewife and not to have pursue career and that now it's becoming more women are uh, pursuing more career they want equal rights they almost want to be men a little bit sometimes and how does that uh, how do you feel about that and that is definitely affecting etiquette as well you know instead of being uh, like ladylike and and calm you know women are becoming more powerful and the alphas you no know? not all of them but i think i'm i've been seeing that more and more and how do you feel about it do you see it here in marbella and in the society it's a big problem now this yeah it's true that everything is changing and i think we are getting it really um in the wrong way how to as i say this is something that we learn now it's a new things because not long ago a woman was only a housewife home, yeah. housewife you know she was a housewife and some of them were like really uh, trying to fight for to have a job and to work but now we are going to the, the other, other extreme, extreme also yeah. so that's why this is a learning process in life mm -hmm. and i'm sure that after that when we're going to try that it's not going to work mm -hmm. because it's not going to work yeah. then again yeah we're going to come back okay. and see because women have one duty and men has another one and we're trying now to change this mm -hmm. we're trying to get what men mm -hmm. is doing instead of doing everything what men is not capable mm -hmm. and all the way around yeah. so uh, it's affecting really in manners and etiquette is affecting the energy of the masculine feminine mm -hmm. energies and um, we as a woman i just want to give a message we have to understand and to remember that our energy as a woman is it's it's the most powerful than masculine energy than anything in the world just because we've been chosen as a woman to give birth you know it's already so, a superpower exactly that's why we have it and we decide and we can control everything but this is our power to keep the family and the man and everything to be in a perfect man has something else that is there that man is have. to lead to protect and to provide that's always and that's what we are born for and now we're changing all that. We want to be this perfect businesswoman and controlling everything. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. 
But if you don't know how to switch and yeah, go in the to shape, find the balance, to find the balance, both. it's not going to work. Yeah. And thinking and talking to so many women who are very successful businesswomen, believe me, I'm not lying. Their personal life mm-hmm. is unperfect. Mm-hmm. They're not happy. Mm-hmm. Or they have a man who are really feminine, mm-hmm. who are not doing anything. And she is coming to me and said, I'm not happy. I want the man who is to lead and to, to be this masculine man. But at the same time, if you are the one who are doing these things, it's he cannot be. Because this energy is a, mm-hmm. they out, have of their, yeah, yeah. out of balance. Yeah, out of balance. So it's, uh, it's, it's really tricky. difficult. It it's is tricky. tricky. So no, because know. for sure you're telling also your daughter, go and study, be successful. But exactly what to one point, you know, it'd be successful, but not too masculine. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know if you saw the Barbie movie. It was, uh, some things were very cringy, but some points are really true. It's difficult. We try to be the perfect woman, the perfect mother, the perfect worker, you, you perfect career. It's so hard to have it all perfect because you're never yeah. too thin, too thick, too that. You know, we're trying. It's very hard to find the balance. I, I find it myself as well because, you know, you want to do good in career, but not too good because then you'll, you don't want to be higher than the man. You know, you, you know, it's very tricky to find the balance, but I think you have to also listen to yourself and, the there is a time for everything. There's a time for the family. You dedicate yourself to the family and your husband. There's a time for also you to, to go and do your career. But I think it's it's a very hard balance to find. It's very hard. But I always say, if you want to have a family, if you have a, or want to have a kids, you need to understand that depends on the standards, mm-hmm. depends on mm-hmm. what the man is um, working and how much his standards are mm-hmm. you need to adapt to that mm-hmm. you cannot ask you say okay i'm gonna be a housewife mm-hmm. i'm gonna and your husband is earning say it three thousand uh, a month and you are asking for a house of three millions mm-hmm. and it's, it's not gonna work mm-hmm. and you say okay but then i'm gonna work i'm gonna make it no you need to always adapt to the situation. Mm-hmm. And if you want to be a housewife and look after the kids, you know that that's what it is. You can help a little bit in the morning when kids are at school. But after that, mm-hmm. you are the mother to be to your kids and to your um, husband as well. Mm-hmm. Because your energy, if it's not in balance and if you're not calm and mm-hmm. relaxed, believe me, no the one works. whole families often. Then you know, you have an experience. Yes. I have it also. Yeah. So it's not like you just say... Being a mom and a wife, housewife and a wife, of course, it's so difficult. Yes. <laughs> but most of us, we don't try it, no. you know. We just like a little bit from here, a little bit from there. It's so difficult. Mm-hmm. Men should appreciate that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we should appreciate the men. It's it's a two-way it's street. It's two-way and it's very difficult communication. Mm-hmm. So I suggest that if you want to have a family, you have to look after your kids and your husband mm-hmm. in a good way. You know, this, it doesn't exist how, how. For me, and I learned it and I've been to so many coaches and I always take what I think it's better for me and what in practice work for everybody else. And there's no 50 50. There is, today I'm 20%. You're going to be mm-hmm. 80, so mm-hmm. we can make 100. Tomorrow I'm 30, mm-hmm. you're 70, or you're 20, mm-hmm. or 10, I'm going to be this 90. So to so make this as a couple, a it's relationship, like a teamwork. it's a teamwork. You know, yeah. we are there together, mm-hmm. but you have your duty, I have mm-hmm. my duty. Mm-hmm. And we are not jumping to show I'm now better than you. Mm-hmm. I'm not better than you. I'm next to you. Yeah. Always beside you. So Lovely. It's so true. It is. And uh, we've been talking about women. Let's yeah. talk about men. What um, What are the qualities of a gentleman or what makes a man sexy in your opinion? Sexy? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, or what today. do you look for in a man? Yeah. Um, also, again, living uh, into my 50s, so imagine this is half life. What a man was in my mind on that time and how I've been growing up and also was different because man was, man. at least at my time when I was 20 and when I was 10 and my, my father was a man. He was in charge of everything almost on the family. And, um, okay. My mom was, was looking after us. She was working a little bit in the morning, but 
there's so many things that men these days are just take it away from uh, his um, uh, how you say it? from what he's supposed to do mm -hmm. so I see it so different so for me a real man a gentleman should have the basic quality is a part of manners and etiquette that he needs to learn he needs to be a protector a man should needs to be a protector he cannot go backward and being like okay she will do everything for me no he's a leader man mm -hmm. is a leader he's a is a fighter you know and uh, <laughs> that time you had these um, military schools that mm -hmm. they took them away i don't mm -hmm. know in your country yeah it was so this was helping a lot yes. give them you know? the discipline and... give them a discipline to survive in life mm -hmm. now it's very difficult that's why they're all in depression mm -hmm. because they don't have basic discipline yes. and many needs that because he's born for that yes. to be a hunter and mm -hmm. to be a fighter mm -hmm. Fighter, not street fighter. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, but a fighter I, I for agree life. with that. The army that they had to go to the army one or two years. I think it was yeah. a good thing. Yeah, know? I mean, of course, it was a lot of bad things. They also yes. heard, you know, with, this is. Uh, it depends how every place is, but men need this. Mm -hmm. I have a son, mm -hmm. and I really, if he can go to a school, even mm -hmm. six months mm -hmm. to a military school or to um, uh, this uh, boy scouting that mm -hmm. is missing these days. Mm -hmm will help them a lot in life to mm -hmm. deal with things after that. So this real man, it's it's a leader, you know, he has a manners, he's a, he has a virtues and he, is, um, he knows how to behave in any situation, the same like the woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shiva is, it's, it's missing these days. Mm -hmm. Why should I do this for her, you know? I mean, because you're a man. And this concept comes from little boy. Boy by 10 years old, they should already open doors. Mm -hmm. They should already do things, you know, um, helping. This is, it's a normal things that I'm sure that most of us, I mean, I did it, but most of everybody else is not doing it mm -hmm. on these days. So you are teaching your son and your daughter all the etiquette tips and are they, are they doing it all the time or are they going with their friends and then forget them? For forgetting about it or are they teaching also their friends uh -huh. yes with them is that uh, i teach them um and sometimes i see my daughter for example taking a glass uh, i said why are you taking the glass like that I said oh yeah mom but because i'm seeing everybody else you know that's the problem that uh, when you're young you still need process uh, until you're 25 you don't have every, your brain is not completely developed mm -hmm in everything mm -hmm. so by 25 is still a lot of things happening so she said look nobody is doing this nobody's holding the glass properly and i just like going with the flow and sometimes also because i see on photos mm -hmm. i said why are you doing that said, oh yes mom i know i know <laughs> you know <laughs> so this is really tricky mm -hmm. but i teach them I, I teach my son what is to be a gentleman. I teach my daughter how she is. I mean, okay, it's no problem. You, she can study. She can be um, trying to be a businesswoman, but she needs to know how to switch. She needs mm -hmm. to know how to relax. She needs to know how to be a creative mm -hmm. because this is all about feminine energies that you need to imbalance. And men these days also, I mean, you know, I've been dating someone who, uh, well, last year, who... <laughs> I was sitting in the car and he will not come and open the door. Uh -huh. And then he comes to me and says, uh -huh. what are you waiting for? <laughs> for you. <laughs> and I said, for you. He said, for me, I'm here. Uh -huh. And I said, can you open the door? Mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, he, he clearly doesn't follow you on social media. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he was, he was against social media. <laughs> and so little things like that, the chair. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to be a little bit pain, but, mm -hmm. you know, this is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I used to do them. I, was, uh -huh. I used to do them. Mm, because women don't really expect that anymore so yeah. it comes it's a two-way thing but do you think chivalry is dead then that you have to teach the men as well or do you see still men doing that in Marbella? Uh, in Marbella well, we have a little bit of everything I heard from a lot of women who their men are like that a lot of women who said I don't need a man to do this for mm -hmm. me so you have the both 
but in general it's not i observe a lot mm -hmm. when i go to the restaurant for example and to places very little mm. very but little hopefully more and more because if you have so many followers it is you know it is of interest and uh hopefully people will will see it as a value again well, i want to ask the woman who doesn't accept this why mm -hmm. what is wrong why doesn't want men to look after you mm -hmm. it doesn't make you that you are mm -hmm. nobody it doesn't make you that you need to please the man because he mm -hmm. has been doing things for you no mm -hmm. this is his duty yeah. it's a part of life yeah they think i can do it myself but i say why do it yourself when someone else can do it for you i think it's lovely <laughs> it is you can do another thing that's yes. why we say a woman is designed to do things that man cannot do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's Leave what it is. Each, each of them their things to do, exactly. right? Yeah. Uh, which celebrities uh, do you look up to who are, who are uh, uh, having good manners and who have good etiquette? Do you see any celebrities who are, who are also like showing their followers? You know, if you follow these kind of celebrities, at least you get good manners and good etiquette. Or isn't there any? Well, royalty, yeah. I'm sure they yeah, are. Yeah, royalty, because it's a part of this, mm -hmm. of course. And, uh, well, from the new celebrity, unfortunately, not much. Not much. Uh, I always go back to the 50s, 40s, mm -hmm. 20s, because there was, you see it, even if you sometimes say, okay, but look at her, her breast was almost out. But this was elegantly. Mm -hmm. You can do it, but mm -hmm. in an elegant and stylish way. Yeah. And you said in the beginning about, um, you know, these days everything is... You a woman think that because they're showing the skin. showing the skin and everything, they will get the man. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you will get this man that is not a quality man. Mm -hmm. So you will have this man for a little bit and then you're going to run away. Mm -hmm. He's going to run for the next skin. <laughs> exactly. And you're going to say, what is this? That's what I don't want. Mm -hmm. But what you are, that's what you're going to perceive. That's, that's mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Yeah. So... I uh, also want to ask about your beauty tips because you mm -hmm. are looking amazing at the age of 50. Thank you. <laughs> um, what do you do? What are your beauty tips? And how do you feel about also plastic surgery and all these Botox and things that are very popular now in Marbella? How do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, this is a... Well, look, uh, how to say? If I was 20, probably I would say something else. Uh, <laughs> now, with every year... I'm using less and less products. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know because of the age or because of um, testing so many things. And I see, um, and you don't know in the, you know, when you're young. Um, well, first of all, when I was young, I never used anything. It's just mm -hmm. a normal cream. Mm -hmm. And you probably after when I get pregnant, because I get this, um, like a dark spot on my face mm -hmm. because of the pregnancy hormones. Mm -hmm. And then I start realizing that I need something, mm -hmm. but I don't know because of that time or because I'm not sure. I cannot say, uh, but I've been always for less, less is more, less is more. And if I have one cream, if I can use only one cream for everything, I will mm -hmm. do that. I cannot put a thousand things on my face. Okay. You know, one for this, one for this, mm -hmm. third, six, seven. Uh, so in general, I've tried everything in my life. Mm -hmm. All the brands and, and I, I know and I learned also mm -hmm. that it's time to have a little bit, maybe six, eight months to some cream and then mm -hmm. change it also. Mm -hmm. mm, I've tried this and somehow my skin is always the same. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, you see progress and mm -hmm. then I think the, the skin gets used, used to, it. to it. And then you need uh, something so, else. So, yes, but I do recommend um, a very good cleaning in the nights. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you see, everybody saying, put cream for the night. Someone they will tell you, don't. You try for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes now all the creams, you know, there's a lot of chemicals. So, try something that is more natural mm -hmm. and I am for okay uh, Botox and uh, fillers and everything but with liquids mm -hmm. because uh, first you need to know where you're going with who mm -hmm. and second try less mm -hmm. and you will see will look better than a lot mm -hmm. maybe a lot of doctors will say no no put put because of all the money so you need to be really aware and really prepare 
or this. find a good doctor who will not tell you that. I think a good doctor yeah. will tell you it's enough. It's enough, yeah. it's enough. So you need to be very... And this, I think, with the age, to look like 20 is impossible. Mm -hmm. And I was struggling in one point, maybe a few years ago, and said, okay, I can see now that I'm getting older. Mm -hmm. mm, and being a model and being exposed to the cameras and this, mm -hmm. and you, you really think that... Okay, I'm getting older, so nobody's gonna like me. Mm -hmm. uh, look at me compared to before, and now all these wrinkles. And there was a moment I was struggling with, mm -hmm. and then I said, "But it's true, you cannot look." Why should you 20. look twenty? No, you are fifty. You can't look twenty. Yes. You're fifty, so make your best looking as a fifty. Mm -hmm. um, wrinkles, yeah, you have them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've tried a little bit of the things, and I see, okay. Little, but still to, to keep my shape of the mm -hmm. face, it's enough. Mm -hmm. Just and, in moderation. Uh, yes. So every month I will do like a face cleaning. Uh, it's um, hydrofacials mm -hmm. uh, because it's nice. And then, uh, um, you know, been invited to a lot of treatments all the time. So I mm -hmm. do it mm -hmm. just to see how it, it's uh, going on on my face. But for the young girls, don't start. You know, you can't start. For me personally, oops, I go so straight right. to the microphone. Personally, to start from 20 with the Botox, I would not do it. Because even if I, I start uh, putting a little bit of uh, acid hyaluronic, how you say mm -hmm. in English? H hyaluronic acid. Acid and uh, a few things of uh, Botox, for example, here mm -hmm. or in the side. Last year. Mm -hmm. So if you see me from last, it's, it doesn't change mm -hmm. so much. Mm -hmm. So why should I start putting on a 20? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not yeah. expert, but mm -hmm. I, for me, look in my face, it's not a problem. Yeah, I mean, beautiful. with the time, you can put a little bit. Mm -hmm. Why not? But just... Uh, don't start too early. Don't start yes. too early. I think that is the problem now because they are the influencers have just so young yeah. following they start like you said 18 20 25 so i think also you you don't even have wrinkles then you know and it's good to prevent to take care of yourself you, you cleanse and moisturize but I, I do believe that it's gone too young they're starting to do these things that they don't need too young yeah but i mean each to their own everyone and eating everyone of course knows. you know yeah. something that at least i was lucky because we didn't have a processed food mm -hmm. we didn't have a fast food so and all this, it's, it's also affecting, it's your, skin. affecting your skin. And um, here I see young generation, then McDonald's constantly mm -hmm. and, and all these places. It's normal. Yeah. Normal that your skin mm -hmm. drinking, smoking. I don't smoke. I don't drink. So that maybe helps. also that helps. Yeah. And now even girls, you see them in, in the, oh, in the um, places for, it's coming now in Spanish for me. Um, going to, to, yeah, no, to Sephora, for example. Uh -huh, mm -hmm. Eight years old asking for cream for the face. Oh, wow. You know, as for serum for the face. Uh -huh. What are you talking about? Thank God. Yeah, for present for my friend, she's, she has a birthday, she's eight years old, and I need a serum. Oh, my gosh. You need a magic really? potion and play in the garden. <laughs> gosh. That's why I said that sometimes. Yeah. social media but this is depends on the parents influence. it's a bad influencers and if we don't uh, for young mothers to limit what your kids are watching mm -hmm. it's going to be very difficult yeah. really it's not easy for the young no, ones right no, now for and sure. for parents also yes. so that's why kids need their parents to be 100% there and controlling the situation because it's not like us we mm -hmm. had it easier well mm -hmm. at least me mm -hmm. on that time yeah yeah so this is a it's a tricky subject yeah. but anyway thank you so much for your work on yeah. teaching everyone if you don't follow Sofia yet go follow <laughs> Sofia Marbella I will link also her uh, Instagram on my uh, on my blog and also we didn't have time to discuss Sofia's favorite places in Marbella I yeah. will uh, list them all in my blog as well so you can see where she goes and what she does and all her favorite restaurants and yes just thank you so much again for your time and uh, thank you for influencing Marbella in a, well the whole world with your beautiful etiquette and manners it's very very needed so thank you thank you thank you so much uh, just to to add to that marbella mm -hmm. um, 
as we said in the beginning, is a very special and magical place. Mm -hmm. uh, only thing is that really be aware of um, it's it's uh, you know it's like the the Bermuda Triangle. Yes. <laughs> so it's gonna suck you sometimes mm -hmm. in and can suck you in a bad way. Mm -hmm. So um, especially for the young ones and especially for couples, really matter of who you're meeting with, who you're just. Um, uh, socializing socializing and don't be so much naive because um there's a lot of tiburones how we say here yeah, sharks <laughs> or sharks so you have to always don't speak so much listen before you speak for Marbella mm -hmm. everything else is just perfect we have the best restaurants we have beaches we have people nice one but still be aware like in any places and just um Try to enjoy and um, bring something positive to Marbella. Don't uh, come and make a mess here. You know, like, <laughs> yes, a, make a good influence, thanks. like good Sophia. Influence, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This episode is brought to you by Summer Mood, sustainable clothing that is comfy and chic. Visit the online shop summermood.com.